Ronan, welcome to the PD Performance Podcast. Great to have you on. How is everything going with you today? You're moved into the new gaff and after a few technical difficulties, we got onto the call. So how's your day going? Friday it is. Going good. Pity, thank you for having me on. Um, it's, uh, we had a few wee blips earlier on, but got the ball going. So all good, thank God. So you're finishing up work or are you still working away? You seem to be flat out these days by the sounds uh, of things. It's not all about GAA, is it? No, no it's not, man. Um, it's been a, like we've, we've been in the house now uh, two weeks, but my God, my head has turned. Hey? I'm, ne- I'm never moving again. Jesus, stressful. But um, I was working um, I have a gym in Oma in the morning. I'd be in the gym in the mornings and then um, I'm a sales rep with Worth Ireland from nine to five. So I'd just be running from both, to be honest. But um, I'll, it's been a bit hectic this last few weeks. So, but all good. Thank God. All good. So how are you balancing the two then? Is it is it a balancing act? Is it quite tough to get into the gym early morning or do you enjoy going in in the morning? Um, I open about, uh, I think it's about 10 hours a week um, and around that, but it's mostly mornings. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday mornings and then a few evenings. But um, I, I, like, um, I don't mind it. Once, you, once you're in the routine, it's, um, it's, it's easy enough. You know, it's not a kid. I run on little to small amounts of sleep anyway. So um, it's what well, you get used to. It. Don't get me wrong. At the start, it was whenever you're the long nights of training and you might be home to late and you're up at six. It comes it comes quick enough at you at times. But no, nah, it's a routine now at this day. So I'm happy enough with it. The inter-county Gaelic footballer is a creature of routine as well, for sure. So it probably suits you a little bit, does it? Absolutely. You need, um, you be in a wee routine, usually in a way for training and maybe keeping yourself occupied. So it's good to have something um, positive on the outside of it. Like that, like I have all my own gym equipment, um, I have my own gym. So like at the start, it was a slog. Don't get me wrong, getting everything sorted and waiting on equipment and ordering equipment. But um, on the on the positive note of it, is it's all your own, you know. So you don't need to be running on on anybody else's time scale. You can, if you're up late, if you're up early, you can go on your own. If you're, for, as an example, like there's set days you come in, you might be wiped, but you have a session to get done. You could fall asleep and wake up at nine o'clock it's happened a few times so you head in at night time you know so it's it's at your um own beck and call regarding to whenever you want to head in yourself but as i say your routine you are you're based in a routine you need to be in a routine and it's good to have something at the back of it that can keep you on the straight and narrow to an extent yeah and it's convenient obviously for you because you have the keys as what you, is what you yeah. said there like so you can go in whenever but do you try to train in there then when there's nobody else in there because i know myself from having a gym in the past when you try to train and you're open you always end up doing something and your training session is pathetic then I, um i try there's times where if i go myself it would be in an off time i try and leave set times during the week that uh, I'm including my own training and it. the last thing I want to do is second myself so that you end up resenting it and then you hit training other people as well so um, I have I've been known to jump into a few classes along with clients to be brutally honest um, they don't mind and it's so we rather than going and maybe dragging your heels to get something done yourself there's a wee competitive edge whenever you're along with somebody else so it's handy that way don't get me wrong but um that's why I've sort of maybe opened. I've not opened any more than ten hours, to be honest. Um, it's in a wee, it's a, it's in a wee clinic in Oma, and there's a physio. Um, it's a physio clinic. A friend of mine has a um, has a physio business and the Reformers Pilates business, Pro Physio NA. So give me a wee shout out. Um, keep it sweet. <laughs> but it's they're they're really busy. They be in like Charlie be in early mornings, and there's a lot of people working under. Maybe there's three or four physios that be in and out. So. The footfall's right and busy. The reformers, Pilates, if you're not up to feeling that you're willing to get your session done and slogging out on a skier, it's sometimes jumping in there and doing reformers for an hour is as good 
um, because the older you get, like I'm, I'm a ton man as it is, but I can tell you the reformers fairly stretch uh, <laughs> things that you haven't stretched in a long time, like, you know, but it's good. Yeah, and with the high running volumes as well, it becomes very specific, your training on the pitch. So it might be good to expose yourself to something that's a little bit different in the reformer Pilates, as you said. Um, yeah. Just to open yourself up, open your body up. And as you said, work the muscles that you wouldn't be working as frequently and in the same fashion when you're playing football. But it, it sounds like a good setup in that you've got everything under the one roof over there. So like people could transition from being in pain with the physio to transition to doing some Pilates when the time comes that they're able to output that. And then eventually they move over to the ski erg for you to batter them after a while yeah. too. Okay. Uh, for me to bring the paleness out in their face. Yeah. <laughs> to bring the pain back after they've got rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's how the reformers, I wouldn't have really paid much attention to them until Charlie brought Charlie, um, He's an Ohio Ironman as well, but he went to New Zealand for maybe eight or nine years. And when he came back from New Zealand, he was he was a physio out there and working with said rugby teams and that. And had he came back with a lot of good ideas. And the reformers, like it was the only reformer uh, clinic in Tyrone for a long time. I know there's a few other ones now, but um, there was people traveling maybe an hour, an hour and ten minutes to come to the classes because they were getting the benefit of it. Like you don't realize it until you're maybe um, you get two or three classes over you that you feel like your core and everything and around your hips and groins are strengthening. Like it's very, you tend to be very one dimensional with Gaelic and it's the same things that's working constantly. And whenever you start working other things um, that you didn't think or even know you had, then you start seeing the benefits of that. But uh, like there was a few classes that I was leading into last year, like to the tail end of last year, Myself and Connor Myler and Richie Donnelly were were jumping into a class every other Wednesday and <laughs> like the noise out of us boys, like the breathing. <laughs> Richie turns purple sometimes when he's in it. Like and you know you can it's funny you can be big and strong and think that you're big and strong, but you're just you're so far off it. The, the likes of that there just brings you back a peg or two. To be brutally honest. A hundred percent. And like, there's a saying in S and C that what you give the athlete is what the athlete is not getting on the field of play. And that's right. exactly what you said. Like you just said that what you're doing on, on pitch is so ultra specific that you need to be exposed to something different in order to be robust enough to do that over time on yeah. the pitch. So obviously you mentioned the two lads there. Is that something that a lot of you kind of try and stay on top of to stay robust so that you can tolerate the full season? Uh, I would probably be the worst at it, to be brutally honest. Um, uh, like I've, the last number of years I've, I've changed and tried to get it to... I've left it far too late, like far too late. Richie and Myler and like Maddie and them boys are freaks. Like they've, they've been doing it for years. You know, they're elastic bands, all of them, you know. So for myself, like, I just try and stay on top of it to make myself as bulletproof as possible that I can get through what I can get through. Sometimes I surprise myself as to what, like, regarding the load and what I can get through because I'm so stiff. And, and around the hips especially, I've had been having baller with them since I've ever come in on board with Tyrone, since so I'm around 20. Like, so I haven't helped myself by looking after them well enough. I've tried to stay away from the physio table and then whenever it comes back to bite you, you have no other option but go and introduce yourself again. <laughs> you know, so but then boys there's a, to be fair, it's now it's probably it's brought in more now and it's more people are more aware of it. Like at the stage. Like I was actually chatting to a fellow today, Connor Clark, the two of us came into the throne team and around the same time and we're saying like like now there's primers, so you'd go and maybe do a primer the day before a game or the morning of a game and, and go and play your game. Whereas like 10 years ago, if you'd done a gym session the same day as a match, you were doomed a, a head case, you know. And that you know, we're more like, worried about filling out the jersey than, than I, actually you know, playing the match. It goes, it goes full, set, full, full circle at times, like, and 
like people now like there is wee primers that you're getting your body ready for you no know, whatever's ahead of it like even doing it before you take to the pitch you know training training sessions and stuff whereas like it's it's not long ago eight or ten years ago that it, things were so different you know so so different so regarding to now like the type of training that people are getting themselves into is way more like research based and scientific based that it's you know there, there's a lot more planning and, and care put into it rather than just go and slog it out and if you're sore mm. grit your teeth and get on with the fuck because you're shaft if you don't do you know what i mean i do i know exactly what you mean and from what you're saying there as well like it, it's the point that back eight to ten years ago it was a case that will just throw loads at you, throw loads of volume at you and do yeah. loads. And then uh, hopefully it works and whoever survives it, survives it. Whereas what you're touching on there with the primers, et cetera, and even the reformer work. Um, I think we're, what we're getting right nowadays is we're getting small amounts of everything done. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be wholesale changes. Like, And I think it's important for listeners to know as well, when you're talking about the reformers classes, as you said, like you might only go in once a week, if even, or once fortnightly. It doesn't need to be three, four yeah. times a week. And the second you say something to a GAA athlete, a hurler or a footballer, and you say that could be beneficial, they'll say to you back, that's grand, I'll do that every day. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, don't do it every day. They go buy a farmer machine themselves and fucking let sleep on it like exactly yeah exactly so i think we're getting a little bit more moderate which is good like but it is about pushing the intensity when you need to i guess so in terms of your training at the moment you're coming into the the club championship season i'd imagine so what's your training frequency like at the moment and how are you managing that with all the work that you're doing and the and the move did you go missing Um, that club training a couple of nights um to be fair uh i have once the county stopped um, I probably missed a couple of maybe a week. Um, tend to just try and get your head ready for um, the same thing again. Um, but I, f- I find like what pulls like whenever you obviously you lose your like you're knocked out into county or whatever. Like it takes you, you you're thinking about a lot of things and like mm-hmm. weighing things up. And it's the club that always pulls you out of whatever pits that you find yourself in. Always. And it's so good to get back to like a base that you've known for so long and people you've known for so long and just sort of just like let a nearly like stress-free environment that obviously you're preparing for games that's coming week on week, but it's just it's it's not obviously the same high standard like go go go, even though it is in a way, it's hard to explain, but it's it's just if you're finding yourself in the pits, there's nothing like it that'll just get you back to where you want to be and get you enjoying your your sport again. Like, but we train we train Sundays and Tuesdays because the games are Fridays at the minute. Um, this weekend we have a double fixture. We're out Friday and Sunday um, because it's, it's usually Friday to be honest, um, which is good if you're not travelling the county. You know, if you're travelling an hour and a half away on a Friday evening to try and make a reserve game or. A, senior game that's tight you're tight for time but the thought's good but then it gives you your weekend um and it's not about socializing like it's it's a weekend that if you know, for planning with family or doing anything like you know obviously the younger lads want to go out they can go out and enjoy their saturday night whereas it used to be sundays at half three four o'clock and you're you're a priest for the weekend you know until until the game comes around like so um but this weekend there's double fixtures this weekend because they cancelled the weekend um, about five or six weeks ago. The weekend, Damien Casey passed away. So oh, yeah. um, it was only right that um, they pulled all the football and all the sporting show that weekend, but they've thrown it in this weekend now. So uh, anybody that's close to 30 or over 30 is going to gonna have a nice bath, maybe a full day tomorrow, trying to recover for Sunday. So it's going to be, it's going to be testing on the body, but um but we'll see how it goes, you know. It's good that they were in tune with what the county needed, though, I suppose, when Damien passed, that, that they knew that there's bigger things than playing football matches. So, God uh, rest him, I suppose. Um, uh, and he, he was a big man in the county, too. Like So, it, it's good that they, they did give that respect to his family to, to pause everything. 
But to get to move on then to to the games, like two games in a weekend is going to be it's going to be pretty tough, regardless yeah. if it's club or county. Like I don't think even at the county level you could even do that, to be honest. Um, no, no, not at that level. Like two two training sessions would be uh, a push. Not, yeah, I, you know, so like two games, two club games, but here, um, it, uh, as you say, it was only right. And obviously they had to get it in at some stage. Maybe, maybe they didn't need to rush it as quick, but at the same mm. thing, it's, it's here now. So we've got to embrace it and see how we, how we come off the back of it, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And and it's very much the attitude as well, as you just touched on there with the club. When you come back from the inter-county set up, it's, ah, Jesus, hard luck. But we've matched next week, by the way. Uh, just, just uh, <laughs> big, big whoop. Forget about that. Now we're playing next week, so you have to think about. It. And in a way, that's a good thing, is what you're saying, because it refocuses you. And you say, right, what's done is done. I'm not gonna have it weigh on my mind for too long because I have other things to focus on. And I have my mates from home that I'm gonna go and try and work towards something with. Um, but you have said that there are some differences. Do you notice a big difference in terms of the preparation from the club and the county player? Because club players still make a huge commitment. But what are the major differences that you see? Um, the, the, the top, top club players, there's no difference, to be brutally honest. Um, like they're pro- like maybe They might even do more at times like by getting down to the pitch and practicing if they have time. Um, whereas if you're maybe with a county and you're still with the club, you mightn't have as much time to get your practice in. Um, with a county, of often like you often any practice that you get in, you tend to you get it before training or, or you hang about after, regardless of if it's extra work or if it's shooting or kicking or anything like that. Like the the probably the one thing is like if we're training at half seven with thrown, like the latest somebody's there. For training is probably seven, you know, so it's a half an hour grace, and that's late. Like, that's like I'd be there from quarter past six, you know, so I give myself easily an hour before I'm out to the field because of the you have to get your ankles taped, you have to get maybe a bit of mobilization done in the gym for your hips. There's a there's a list the length of your arm that you, <laughs> you're yeah, checking yeah. off. You it gets know, longer but, as you get older uh, as well. Absolutely, man. It was long enough when it started, but by God, it has tripled since, since I've got, got to where I'm at now. But whereas the club training, for instance, some man would rock up at five to eight for training at eight o'clock and he's early. You know, some boys come at five past eight that fucking grinds my gears, to be brutally honest, because it's like, it's just, it's, you wouldn't come late to work. You know, and I know it's not work, but it's still if you're if you're fucking buying into something, you buy into it. Um, so you just it, it's a routine, the routine that we, you go back to again. Like if you're in the habit of coming to and getting your wee bit done beforehand, like there's there's fellas there and in, in our club and like the reserve players, and they're there to give themselves half hour, you know, and they're out in the field getting ready for half hour, and then there's fellas in the senior team that would come late. You know, they would land on late. So that's probably like that's not that's my club. Like the, I'm sure there's the likes of the senior clubs that are you no know, people are striving to be like. Um my Alexa is kicking off here. Relax with her phone. This is understand your accent, man. That's the problem. Uh, she's uh, gonna start giving out here now. Um no, but there's a f- the likes of the senior teams, Trillix and Aragal, they would have um like if you sort of didn't buy into it they would just sort of say you know what just go play thirds or go play reserves you're not until you're hitting a certain standard um you're not going to be here like so that's that's where you probably want to strive to regards to what you're looking for to your club but at the same time you can't not everybody wants to be like you or wants to think like you or prepares the same way and it's just as I say it's a habit for me brutally honest over the last number of years that you try and get there early and you, and it's probably because you've been taping ankles and wrists and thumbs and shit like that there so you're giving yourself a 20 minute grace to get that done but at county um nobody was slick like you're not yeah. late because you if know. you're late you're gone see you later ah, and like you're buying and the people are like trainers are there from six o'clock getting things set up you know 
there's video analysis boys spending hours upon hours upon hours of breaking games down and keeping you info. You know, you like you were turning up to train, and if you can't turn up in time, like, who are you kidding? You know. But it's the same thing with a club setup because you're making a commitment to the group of players that you're with. So it is a case that you should be there. Now, that's not to say that there will be the odd time that something will go wrong, but you owe it to your players, your teammates, and your, to respect them enough to message in if you do have something that comes up and you're going to be late. But it's when it occurs time and time again that it becomes a problem and, and yeah. then it kind of permeates the group and everybody's at it. Um, yeah. But at the same time, as you said, not every club has the luxury of having three, four teams that they can yeah. pick from and drop lads down. So you have to be a little bit more understanding with these things. So do you find yourself driving those standards more often than not? And do you ever have to bite your tongue and think, right, look, there's bigger fish to fry here. I'll, I'll bite my tongue on this one. But if something else happens, then I'm going to lose the plot or I'm going to tell them. All right, to be fair, th- like our boys are good, like... Uh, that our lads are good, and you know? like some like someone's coming from you know maybe up coming from Dublin, to like we'll have lads coming from Dublin this evening to play the match. We have boys running the country. Uh, that work on the white lining crowd. There's a heap of young lads that work on the road safety lorries, and they'd be white lining. They could be in Sligo. They could be in far end of Donegal, Mayo. You know, and the common straight. <laughs> common oh, straight. They're not like uh, the, the, the lines wouldn't be well too straight down there now if they're down there. Oh, so, no, they'd, be, they'd be working for a while, they'd be late right. then. But you could land to a, a match and there's lorries and vans parked in the car park with these boys coming straight. You know, you can never question their dedication at all. You know, but we, like there was a couple of lads that were on the county team along with me um, from, from the club this last number of years. And They've picked up good habits. They've been driving standards. See when you like when you come into that environment, like of like a high performance environment where you see how the, the likes of Petey Hearts and Matty Donnelly's, you know, Potty Hamsies conduct themselves, like and what they do. Like if any man watched Myler for a week, they would they would change their outlook on how they do things, how they train. Like he's, he's he doesn't sit still, you know, and it, like it rubs off. On, like, on everybody else because if he's hitting standards and him, he's not on his own like obviously there's loads but like if you're looking at him and the standards that he hits and you're not you're not doing it then you're going to have an awful, awful lot of catching up to do so the likes of that rubs off on the younger boys and then you go back to your club you find out what other boys are doing in their clubs and you try and maybe incorporate it back into what you're doing with your own you know and it it works well like you know, and you can see boys trying hard, like driving standards, you know, and, and honing things home, like, but as I say, you have to take on board what everybody else is doing. You know, they're not going to think the same way and they're not going to want to put in the same commitment. At the same time, it could just be a social aspect that they're there for, for crack. And that's, that's fine as well, like. Absolutely. That, that's why we're, we're playing at the end of the day. That's why we're all involved because it is good crack. It's yeah. meant to be anyway. It's not always. It's not good crack when you lose. No. But in relation to the younger players coming in then that come into the setup, which in Tyrone, do you find yourself taking a bit of a mentorship role with them? Because obviously you're saying the things that have rubbed off on you over the years, do you find yourself maybe not going to them and uh, like and actively saying, this is what you need to do, but do you find yourself answering questions from them quite often in relation to what they should be doing? I if they act like obviously you wouldn't be like there anytime somebody new comes in like they're always made welcome like come the end of this year the under twenties cup maybe four or five under twenties came in and at any given time during the year somebody could be out and in you know like at any stage if they're playing well for the club and you know there's maybe a bit of a break in between times um, regarding to county games they could be in for a trial game could be in for a couple of training sessions and be asked to stay so the likes of the young boys that came in if they ever asked you know well, we probably didn't get to spend an awful lot of time in these social company this year because of the way things ended for us so quickly but um for the for the young boys that came in the previous years like it there's always a welcomeness you know and there's always an arm around for if any of them have questions because 
you were in that position, you know, you were thinking you're coming in to play football and it just doesn't happen straight away at times and you have to, I call it jail time, like everybody's got their jail time to do and you got to prove your point that you're steely enough and that you're good enough and the only way you're going to do that is by gritting your teeth and putting your shoulder down and getting on with and that's where I found myself for the first number of years and until you get your chance and when your chance comes that's where you have to everything else is on you like you know there's certain things it's, you can't control and whenever it comes around to yourself you can control that so that's when you got to take your chance like but like it's great to see young boys in because it pushes like it drives it to a different standard because they're carefree they're cocky you know they're just on a different breed you know to be brutally honest and as I say when I came in as a, as a young lad and it was the likes of Steve O'Neill and Gormley and Sean Cavanagh and them boys like the, I don't see myself like them now I see myself maybe like maybe a wee bit more s sort of sit back like sort of sit back and maybe take it in a wee bit more whereas the young boys coming in now wouldn't be like wouldn't have been like me either though it was so goes different obviously you can't expect it to be like but um whenever I come in you're, you tend to be in awe of them boys sitting there three all Ireland medals numerous um Ulster championships absolute heroes like you know when you were nearly afraid to look in their direction in case Gormley just took your head off <laughs> you know but that's like don't get me wrong you're, you tend to find yourself in a position where you're trying to make yourself as uh, you know as friendly and as accommodating as possible because it can be a daunting enough place coming in, you know, and and if you're just a cop, you tend to be afraid to ask questions. So you try and make yourself as as friendly as possible. It sounds like they bring a lot of energy to the group, the younger lads. But as well as that, it always sounds like you're a very close group, which probably stood to you a couple of years ago. Well, not the season that just past season before when you went the whole way. But I would say that because you're so close as well, it probably makes it even harder when things don't go your way like this season. I like there is a real good bond to be brutally honest, because a lot of the boy, like a lot of the lads have been together for a long time. Like you know, we, you have Dowler boys that may be coming off the 2008 minors, 2009 minors, like in 2010, like thrown won All Ireland minors in 2008 and 2010, like some Maddie, Donnelly's group and Ronnie Neal's group and then boys like and like I know Ronnie's gone now, but like those wild big characters, you know, and the crack was unreal. And anytime you got to go away on say if you were heading away down the country to play somebody, like the bus journeys, the hotel, like all that there was absolute gold. Like that is on the bottom level, that can't be touched, cannot be touched, like and See, so getting out to socialise, like getting away, maybe after games, trying to get everybody gathered up and, and head somewhere. And we tend to, what we've done in previous years, like we lock ourselves away somewhere, just ourselves. And there's a bit of crack then with different games and stuff, you know. So the likes of that, it probably wouldn't have been done. It wouldn't have been done like when we were younger, you would have socialised, but it was... Like you know, and you'd stayed in your your clique because you were younger, and then there was certain fellas that were out for a wee while. Certain lads were going home because they were did wins and they were married. Whereas there's a few of our lads that's married with children, but like when I first came in, there was a lot of the other boys were married with wins. Like where now it's not like it's probably the demand of it has got more severe. Like Morgan has his children and Petey his children. And they're both married, and I can't think off the top of my head of anybody else that has like was married with Wayne's like. So you'd have been whenever I came in, that would have been like all the senior boys were married with Wayne's, and, and they wouldn't have been out as much like or able to to go one way in as much regards to the social aspect of it. Like so, um, it's definitely more demanding now, for for for, for sure, but. Getting getting away with each other on the bus journeys and see match day bus journeys and someone on the boombox and playing absolute horrible tunes and then there's a good tune that comes on and the whole the riff lifts off it like you know it's it's 
the football is one aspect of it, but the likes of the memories that come off the back of that are, if you could bottle it up, it would be, like it would be fucking something else. Like, That's that. what it's about, like having those memories with the group. Like, But what you're saying there is there's not many people that will put up with the inter-county player schedule now and the, the demand. So all the boys are trying to stay single. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. it sounds like in comparison now to when you first came in, and it's probably up and down the country. It sounds like there was a bit of a kind of a hierarchy when you went in initially in terms of age and, and you mentioned like clicks and whatnot. Like now it sounds like you all see each other on a level and it's probably because of those bonding trips and, and those trips where you go away and because you are actively trying to be as welcoming as possible to young lads coming in. Whereas back in the day, they probably would have been testing you out a little bit to, to see if you're going to make it. I like they would have, you know, obviously there's, there's no different as the club like you would have tested your test no other to see what you're made of but um it was it's like uh, clicky is probably the wrong word for it because it, it's not as if it was ba- like a bad vibe or anything it was just you came in and you were probably like taken aback mm. by like who was in the changing room and what you were sharing the changing room with and being like part of an intercounty setup, like throwing were coming off the back of the noddies and it was it was huge like you know more and, pressure. Like, was it would have more pressure? Probably, probably I because like you were taking on the mantle of what uh, like a standard that had never been set in the county before. So you mightn't have seen it at that time as pressure, but the like the boys were probably thinking like these boys need to have a certain standard and they need to have it quickly or else this will pass us by completely. You know, they're probably thinking about getting another All Ireland, or some boys were trying to get their first. You know, because there was a gap of from 2008 to 2021 of 13 years, where boys like were part of the throne team for a long time and never got to what we got to. Like we were, like, we're very very lucky to be part of it. But there was some amount of people that came in and put put work in and never got never got nothing out of it, you know, and obviously the boys that got to play in that time, like the likes of getting to represent and to play at the highest level in All-Ireland quarterfinals, semifinals, you no know, Grace Cook Park, won maybe a couple of Ulster championships. That's class, but there was boys who were there who didn't get a minute that put in the same amount of work, you know, went to the same amount of trainings, went to the same amount of trips away, left their family, left their children, you know the commitment on it's it's completely and utterly bonkers at times. Like you know, like that you just put everything on hold, and it was just if you didn't, somebody else would. Mm. So like you're either in or you're not, and that's obviously how it it should be. But it's 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 hard getting into that groove. You know where the amount of things that you pass up on stag dues, weddings, birthdays. Uh, like there's a, 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 the less the length of your arm again on things that you will miss over the next 10 years if you're playing for your county because you just can't go to you know and like it's part and parcel of it you know but it's still something that takes getting used to it's probably getting harder as well as well the way society's gone now like in that all these holidays away and trips away and stag do's and what what else like they're all more accessible right. whereas if you missed a stag do back 10 15 years ago you probably missed a, a trip to carrick and shannon but <laughs> if, if you if you miss a stag do nowadays you might be missing a trip to prague or something uh, like. or vegas you know like it's <laughs> yeah. completely bonkers you're right like you're absolutely right but um and that's that's as i say you might chat to people like how do you do it like and it's if you didn't want to do it you wouldn't mm. you know so it's like once you if you didn't enjoy it you wouldn't and like I've often thought what what happens after you know because it's it's gone in the blink of an eye you know and like with lockdown came at a, a stage where it was nearly good that you realised that there's life after it or life around it that you have to sort out and sort out pretty quickly. Um, it sort of gives you a look at 
you know, it's maybe it's not all doom and gloom once this is done, like, but once you're in that lifestyle for that length of time, it's it's hard to fathom what it would be like without it, you know. Do you think it makes you appreciate the nights out with the lads a little bit more that they're so infrequent? Probably, like because when they happen, they're it's gold, like it's it's you you don't want somebody around with a video camera, but you'd love somebody going around with a video camera just recording everything and telling you, you know, this is what happened here if you don't remember it, but because <laughs> you won't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like they're it's absolutely brilliant, like you know when. Obviously, last year, coming off the back of last year, like getting to just tour the country with the, with, with the boys, they can, you know, having excuses to go and do things, like, rather than making excuses to not. Mm. You know, it's priceless, like, and as I say, not everybody's going to be lucky enough to, to achieve, like, achieve, I suppose, what we achieved last year, but at the same time, like, it's not about that. It's It's... Like you always hear people saying about the, the journey rather than the destination, and the, like part of the journey is these night. Like it all comes together. The journey could be heading away for a training weekend, or going on a team night out and going to piss up. You know, mm-hmm. and this is all it's all the same. You know, and one like a three day training weekend, you could get loads out of it, and you could get the same amount out of a uh, paintball day going on the having for going for a few pints after. So we're like obviously there's a time and a place for it, but it's equally as important, you know, for boys to maybe let the handbrake off a wee bit and sort of talk around them and maybe air what the, you know their their devilish side to an extent, like mm. you know. But it, that's the intangible things that you can't measure really. That that's the the bit that 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 you need to develop as well, like and and they're harder to develop, but. You've mentioned la- or this season now a couple of times and last season and you've had it enough time now to sit on it and think about it. And I don't know if you have spoken about it as a group, but from a personal level, can you kind of see the differences in what you did right and wrong in both years? Or is it much harder to, to put a finger on than people expect, than the armchair experts expect, the lads down the pub? Uh, hi, there's plenty of them, high school <laughs> experts, but... Yeah. Um... That obviously, with like you have loads of time to think about it, and it's the only thing that you do think about whenever things don't go wrong. You know, you're because obviously you wanted to try and achieve back to back, and you feel that it would have been possible. Um, of course, it would have been possible because I think the championships probably as open as it's ever been in the last ten years, to be brutally honest. Um, so on that aspect. It's disappointing, but like I suppose you have to take a lot. You'll take a lot from it regarding, you know, how to deal with certain things. Like we we're probably chasing it a wee bit. Like the seasons condensed a wee bit more, um, which means that you have to get it right quicker. Whereas if you were, if it's fitness levels that you were chasing, you would have had time to get them, you know, caught up on because we were away it, it wasn't fitness levels it probably just came down to maybe just decision making at certain times and when you look back at it it probably was the same way mistakes that were happening week on week that you thought that you were um fixing but you were really just papering over them um so that's disappointing don't get me wrong but in the amount of effort that everything you put in to try and Get, get the most out of it that you can because no throwing team had ever done back to backs and mm. um but there's all there's a, there's obviously something like well, there was a difference this year that was never there before was that there was a target on your back you know mm. from the get that's new never been experienced never been there before and like I remember like I've played and was thrown for numerous years and like this might 11 season I've been here since 2012 like but like we even took Dublin to Oma and we've took Kerry to Oma as all Ireland champions and like you build that up some amount in your head to take a scalp you know what I mean and like that's how every other county was viewing a game against us last year you know and like you have to 
deliver and you have to live up to being all England champions and we we didn't to be brutally honest which is disappointing like we showed glimpses of it in the league like we, we left ourselves a lot of work to do in the league and then we had to get two wins home to me one away to Kerry like we hadn't I've never won in Clarny until this year when I ever got my pants pulled down down there like so um like we're probably one of only, like maybe the only team to have beaten Kerry this year so like there's positives to take from it of course um but ultimately we didn't live up to what we wanted so it's back to the drawing board to an extent but that's the good thing you always get another chance like you know what i mean it's not a case that all's you know dead and buried and doom and gloom like you it's a game at the end of the day and there's so much worse that could be going on so fuck it like you, l- you learn from it as well that's what it sounds like from there like you learn and then you, you won't be as naive going into next year but as well as that like well not even naive that's the, the wrong phrase to use but as you said like there's a there's a there's a target on your back and everybody's after it and okay. everybody wants that scalp and everyone wants to beat you which makes it even harder to, to live up to the hype or to win all these games and get through those games because there's an added little bit of spice to those encounters yeah. and yeah. If it, that's foreign to you, it's going to be quite tough. But but it sounds like you did learn a lot as a group. And I know you said that the, the championship is as open as it ever is has been. But I would say that that's because standards have gone up a level rather than they've dropped. Like, I would say the standard of football that's being played this season in particular and last season, it's just of such high quality that everyone's almost on a level playing field on their day. And a lot of it does just come down to the day, doesn't it? Like, Yeah. Like, last year we got, there was a few games where the ball bounced the right side first, 100%. You know, and like with, <laughs> when you sort of look back and see how mad it was regards to COVID and like, why is dropping like flies, hey? Like it was, it's, it was complete bonkers. And then, as I say, the rubble of green went free for a change. That looked like whenever that happened, it was like, this is going to completely and utterly screw us completely. And then you come out of the Ulster final and it just gets goes from bad to worse. Like, I was back training on the Thursday night before the Ulster final after having it. And like... I couldn't smell, I couldn't taste anything for about, I'd say, seven weeks after, eight weeks. You know, I was, com- man, no joke. Like, I didn't know what I had in my legs, like, leading into the end of the Ulster final. I was marking Jack McCarron. I had been cramping for probably 50 minutes, and I had 20 minutes to go, like, and I <laughs> Ah, I swear to God, if I uh, some of it was complete mad. Like I didn't know. Well, I remember going in at half time, and you're obviously dehydrated. This last one, like we played on a Saturday night, and and Kroger's so I got out to training um, on the Thursday night, and everything was like I was rattling in my chest. Uh, I was just wasn't. I wasn't even close to being well. But we had that many people who we're in the same boat, if not worse. Like, I, like he had to bite the bullet and say, here, just got to get on me. And I started to like, move chest. I've asked my now, but my chest was rattling. I was taking on Hiller, thinking it's going like, to help. And it might as well have, like, I was just like pissing against the wind, man. It was nothing was happening. But at half, at half time, I remember, like, I have this memory of going in at half time and sort of being in a wee daze, like, because I was completely, completely fucked. Like, and I came running out for the second half and I was like, Jesus, where's my gum shield? Couldn't find my gum shield. Tap on my, I always keep it in my cycling shorts. So I was like, come around out, then on my gum shield, turn back in. Like everybody was laying out on the pitch. Ball was ready to be thrown up. David Goff was ready to throw it up. And I ran back in, I had a few gum shields. So I took another one out and couldn't find the one I was wearing. So I came running back out and went to put it in my mouth and the gum shield was in my mouth. <laughs> so I was in looking for my gum shield and my gum shield was on my mouth. Like I swear oh, to God, nice. just was on a on a different planet, thing eh? on a different planet. Like, and that was just pure mental fatigue. Eh? Pure. Do you find mental. something extra then in those moments? Do you think? Probably ignorance more so than yeah. 
than anything else. It was like I it was my it was the thirty first of July last year, so it was it was my thirtieth birthday, and I was getting to play in Croke Park in an Ulster final on my thirtieth birthday, and potentially be an Ulster champion. So that was probably that extra bit that I needed and that got me through to be brutally honest. I think Hugh Pat McGeary had been warming up for 20 minutes like, and he was running up and down the sideline like a bison ball. Like, he was just bouncing, ready to get in and it didn't come to it. He didn't get in. It, like, we ended up hanging on by the skin of our teeth. But um, like, as I say, last year when I really liked the carry game, it like, only got worse after the Ulster final with boys dropping. But... The, the ball definitely did bounce first on certain occasions. You know, the likes of semi final, Conor McKenna's second goal, um, like Jack Barry volleyed the ball back into him, you know. So that there is a bit of luck, you know, him and Tierney mm-hmm. McCann wrestling for the ball. It could have bounced out wide as handy. So then things probably didn't bounce for us over the years previous. Um, you almost felt um, that you were being hard done by at times coming off the semi final against Kerry in 2019. You know, the All Ireland final in 2018, you felt that like, things were going well and then it just sort of had a pothole. Um, and, and previous years, like you'd been there, thereabouts, you often wondered, were you ever going to get there? Because from like I've been with Thrones, as I say, from 2012. We were a bit in the qualifier game in Clarnet in 2012. 2013 was a semi-final loss. 14 were a bit first round bear mad or second round. 15 was a semi-final. 16 was a quarter final. 17 semi-final, 18 final and 19 semi-final. So you had been there, thereabouts for so long. But as I said, everybody has a sweet voice in their head and you often wondered, were you going to get there at all? You but you know, kept putting yourself in a position to do uh, it. That's what and, and, and doing the right things and, and yeah. not expecting but hoping that eventually it'll come together if yeah. we keep keep going. Eventually, yeah. I'll run out onto that field and hopefully I'll have my gum shield in my mouth and hopefully I'll know it's there that time. Yeah. And hopefully I don't need two. You know. <laughs> yeah, dude. What did you do with the other one? Did you throw it in your sock? I tucked it into my shorts. Just like, <laughs> man, it's like ah oh, here. What? I'll never forget it. Like because I've often. Seen photos of me with a gum shield in my mouth and then another gum shield like sticking out of a cycling charge. Like just in case one I didn't like one that spat it out and give it to another try the one. Oh man. Complete crazy. That's a story for the high stool now, later on in life. That's one that you'll be telling. I've only told that story once before and it was to Kieran Murphy, the fellow who makes the Gaelic gloves and he couldn't stop laughing, like so. You were the second yes. man. We're very lucky. <laughs> there'll be there'll be a fair few more here in it now, I'm sure. Uh, but it sounds like from that though that you're pretty well prepared for matches to move on. Like in that you had a number of other gum shields on you. Like, do you uh, prepare diligently for the matches? Like, because you have a match this evening, so it might be a good exercise to ask you what is your pre-match routine like. It it doesn't really change. Like we, to be fair, with gum shields, you get them through the GPA you get them every year and so you tend to have maybe you'll tend to keep two or three um, uh, in the side pocket of your bag and that's why there was another one um, but I've often like I got my t- I broke my teeth uh, playing down in my own one time like Aidan O'Shea's heel caught my, my chin and it chipped my teeth my front teeth so after that I've always worn them um, it was a case that like there's been plenty of boys that tuck it into their sock and still tuck it into their sock and you can see that the evidence of it um, during games you know maybe getting caught and getting a book in like I just think that it's it's probably just housekeeping in my fact that you get used to wearing it and then if it's like a seatbelt if you're not wearing it and you go out you feel like you're naked mm. to an extent like so um, but routine ways you tend to just stick to the same routine like a Fridays have been working pretty well for the games lately like you're just finishing work at home get a bite to eat and then just sort yourself out and go you tend to be ready early and just go like when you've as I said before like ankles or two ankles to tape up a thumb to tape um so that takes time and you're doing it yourself so like you just give yourself enough time that you're not rushing you know you don't want to you want to get it done and maybe have 10 minutes to to chill in so um, other people are different they have set routines of like maybe superstitious routines in a way but thankfully I've never really been 
until that there or really being hounded by that by my own thoughts to an extent so it's I'm probably grateful that I'm I can just go with the flow to an extent like you're good at switching off from it by the sounds of things and then just switching on when you need to yeah there's no and point in, I suppose yeah. you're very experienced now at this stage too like so I uh, you tend to learn like there's no point in taking the hinges off at half five for a game at half seven you know so you have to like yeah like Mickey Hart just always like give you a he would talk to the team and then he would just dial it down then and you'd get on the bus and go Every, like everybody's different some boys listen like there's a boom box in the bus going to matches and some boys have headphones in because maybe they just have they could be listening to a podcast or they could be hopefully this one uh, they could be sleeping you know you don't you just don't know whatever as I say I'm probably do both if they're listening to this one <laughs> No, not that bad, but um, but you have to you have to be. It's not that you can switch it on and off like a light dealer. Like you have to. It's just the probably the routine that you find yourself in. That you once you get onto the field, that you have to. If there's any doubt in your head, it needs to go quickly. Like you know, because if you're not up to it, you you're wasting somebody else's chance. Plus, you're going to let fourteen other lads down. That's no standing beside you so you gotta you just gotta be at it to be brutally honest as quick as you can and as often as you can and you can't always be but you just learn as you go along um through your experience i suppose on maybe it could be a wee routine that sort of gets you like if something worked well last week what was it and maybe sticking with it so that if you if you went off it you haven't really got an excuse to let yourself feel that you have a reason to to be slacking or to mm. taking the foot off the gas, you know. Sounds like a commitment to the process, which is something that you've, you've touched on an awful lot. But then on yeah. the other side of that, do you have, and I suppose in relation to that too, commitment to the process, do you have a post-match routine? Something that you always do post-match? So dependent on where you're at or what you're doing. Um, not not really. Um, uh, county, you would just depending on what it was. Sometimes it, you would just come straight home, depending on the time of the game or whatever. If it's if you've got time, obviously you'd be maybe boys might be getting a chance to socialise, you'd be maybe getting home and getting meeting up somewhere with lads like but like the last number of years you try and get a bit of recovery in regards to if it's ice or if it's cold water therapy, something like that there. Like it we've been known to there's a wee lake up in Gorchin and um, we've been known to just go and maybe chill out there for twenty minutes, go into your waist and maybe put on, put the headphones on or do something. There's maybe, there was four or five of us that used to go up from the club uh, after games and stuff like that there on the way home. So it's, that there's a good habit to be in, you know, because it's it's beneficial. Like we aren't a million miles from Ross uh, like in Donegal where our club is. So um, for home games, sometimes we head that way um, for the cold water side of things, like because boys would have, couple of the lads from the club have a house and mobiles down there so you tend to go down and maybe all gather there and head head into the water but we're lucky that you're you're close enough like because drones obviously landlocked so you're going to have to find a lake or find something like that if you're elsewhere but we're lucky that we're close enough to the border and doing all that you can like half an hour from our pitch and you're you're in Ross now so it's not bad do you know what the best part about that what you just said is though is that you've said it's we go so yeah. it's it's the social connecting aspect as well like whereas yeah. if you went by yourself for 20 minutes it'd be fucking it wouldn't be too fun uh, like whereas when you go and there's four or five of you and you're chatting about the match or something else like completely like you do recover a little bit better because that's what it's about like you have yeah. to have that that aspect of just a community aspect or, or having a chat with your mates and connecting with each other, I suppose. So uh, big, that would help, like. Big thing. Like, it's, as you say, the social aspect. It doesn't always have to be, like, like the social side of things. Like, co- coffee, like, Richie Dolly has a place there in Oman, and coffee, and room coat, and look, you're never out of it, drinking coffee and meeting up and chatting, you know, and he's an infrared sauna with, like, with, go there sit for 45 minutes so the likes of that put a podcast on obviously your podcast that we're putting on we don't anything else but um okay. see the likes of that 
you know, it's it's as it's massive as well. Like it's probably as big. Obviously, you're getting the benefit of the recovery side of things, but the more people that you can sort of follow along with you, the better. Hundred percent. You know, you did touch on on Mickey there earlier, and you were in the unique position. Well, a good few. You actually have played under a number of very like well-renowned coaches now. Do you find that there's a coaching style that you favour now that you have the experience of the couple of years with the two lads and then and then the few years with Mickey as well? Well, a good few years with him. And then you're obviously you're working with different coaches at club level all the time as yeah. well. Um, you'll never like club football and throwing never tends to go too far off what like throwing be doing in general. Um like throwing championships, probably one of the most competitive championships in Ireland, if not. The most competitive, like there's been the senior championship and thrown have had maybe sixteen or seventeen different winners, like every year for the last number of years. Nobody's went back to back since like two thousand and two. So it leaves it that it's exciting and it's you know open and it's for that reason it's because it's like it's enjoyable football. It's wide open and it brings a massive crowd. And that's just coming off the back of maybe. A lot of the coaches are extra own players or extra own coaches, you know. So there's obviously you, you when I joined Throne, Fergal McCann, God rest him, and Tony Donnelly were the coaches. Like they had coached Tyrone in two out of the three All Irelands, like oh five and oh eight. Um and then Horse came in along with like Gavin Devon came in along with Mickey then in twenty fifteen. He had different ideas then, like you no, know, a lot of them they're well intelligent uh, football heads. Like, you know, and it's not everybody can can coach at that level, and you see that often. You no know, big names go in and they don't belong hanging about. Where it's and around Tyrone, it's the same names that's been hanging about for a while because they're successful. But you probably you'll probably take bits from all. Mm. Um, like we played to maybe a set defensive method for a long time whenever football was defensive and say the air like 2010 onwards started getting especially Ulster you had to be like you couldn't be shipping scores in Ulster because you needed to get out of Ulster and then if you played if you played in the qualifiers if you were beating Ulster and you played in the qualifiers you couldn't lose you couldn't afford to lose you know because the season was over so you might have locked it down until you got out you know, you made it just went a wee bit tighter at the back and didn't ship as much just to get through games. And and then when you got to Co Park, you maybe let the handbrake off to an extent. And that's what that's what every team tries to do. It's not a case that it's all defend like every team defends. You know, sometimes Are you listening, Pat's plan? <laughs> uh, sometimes like when the carry boys work back, it's you no know, fair play to them. They're all working hard, but when when thrown do it, it's uh they're playing 15 men behind the ball, you know, so it's it's the same story, but it's read differently. So, like, everything's the same, you know, you have to, you have to put a shift in, and if you're not putting a shift in, then you're going to be watching it with the 30 odd other thousand people that's watching it. So, like, I feel that it's not, where the game's at, probably in a good place at the minute regarding the, like there's a good the balance yeah. uh, and like you're seeing good defending but you're also seeing like freaks light it up at the other end and you no know, and don't get me wrong like you probably need to go a wee bit more defensive with the likes of the forwards that's on show at the minute because your lights will be out pretty quick if you think that you're gonna go um toe to toe with some of them boys like so it, it could be a long 70 minutes of times like but like Paddy Andrews said it earlier this season, he said they often had 14, 15 behind the ball, like, but nobody mentioned it when they were winning yeah. championships. Like, so yeah. everybody does it. But I'd say the big difference probably is that both, as you've touched on there, the attack has improved, but more so than just the attack, the transition to attack has, has improved from or has improved from many, many teams, which probably leads to more exciting football because it's a little bit faster. Because yeah. teams there's less of a build-up now. It's like, we've got the ball, let's go. And I know that's a general statement, but for a general kind of outline, that's what you would see more often than not now, which from my completely uneducated position, 
um, is why I'm enjoying the matches a little bit more, I would say. Um, right. But you, you play to win as well, as you said. You, right. And like you would take the shackles off in Croke Park, but if your focus is getting out of Ulster, then you do what's necessary to get out of Ulster. Uh, there's no point in taking the shackles off in Croke Park if you're watching it, watching some other team play and you're, you maybe lost a game in, in Longford or somewhere like that there, like, because there's you no, know, once we done it nearly like the Circuit of Ireland to the stage in 2018, I think it was, we were away to Carlo. We were like, I've played in Carlo or in Meath, like we beat Meath by a point after extra time. You know, there's games that go to the, <laughs> Jesus, they go to the wire, like, and like they're not. Uh, televised as much or shown as much, but like all, all people see is like maybe an Ireland semi final or a final and, and how good things were, but they don't realize how close things were at a different stage and the show could have been over completely. Like, so, like, there's definitely a good balance now. Um, that as you say, a transition like teams don't hang about to get the ball turned over, they go like hell up the far end of the field, and it's a complete foot race to try and get a team caught out before they get set up defensively or getting some sort of structure in place. So that's, it's just like fitness levels are at a different level. They're on a completely different level than what they would have done previous years. Um, your ability needs to be on a different level. Like if you can't carry the ball comfortably and kick the ball comfortably, then you're going to be watching it as well. So like the footballer is probably better than what it was previous years. Like obviously you had like real high class of, of, of players during like down the years, but you also had dogs like, and their job was, and it was one job, you know, and it was to annoy somebody for 70 minutes. Whereas now you could be that, but you have to weigh in somewhere else as well. So this is where it's just more open regards to like the talent ways, and that's probably why you see like the likes of cornerbacks going up the field, kicking scores, and fullbacks the odd day as well. Oh, fullbacks the odd day hitting the ball, and then it might go over the bar like a miss kick sometimes. But like you go, say, if you went back to, for instance, you go and watch the club championship and throwing again, like you see Michael McKernan or Potty Hampstead they don't play in the fullback line for their club, like they're playing maybe midfield or centre half back, could kick two three points a game. Just because they're wearing two or three in the throne jersey, you, you'd be shocked, you know. So, them boys, and it's every, hey, that's every county, that's yep. every county. So, that's where the game's at. It's like it has completely left, like it's you cannot compare where it's at now to where it was before. Like, it's and, and in 10 years' time, you'll not be fit to compare where it's at now to where it will be then because it's just going to go to a different level again. And if you don't agree with that, you're you're full of shit, you know, you're <laughs> basically, yeah. Champ, you know, and you're because I see other boys saying, Oh, we put work in, of course, you put work in, of course, you did, you know, because you had the and like that was the way it was. But like, I'll not be running about in 30 years' time saying that throwing in 21, 2021 are as good as throwing in 2050 because it, it fucking won't be like it'll be a know? different sport as well, you know. so that's uh, that obviously it gets to a certain level and like it's just like you're you're breeding completely different athletes like you're you brought you, like the bred good footballers but now they're breeding them at six foot five and they're kick off either side and they're complete freaks of nature you know this is where it's at now like it's not a case that they're peter canavans they're not they're like David Clifford's and Shane Walsh's, you know, they're at that level. Darren McCurry's, Cal McShane's, you know, and you could have a, you'd like to have a long career. Um, I'm glad I've got mine in, to be brutally honest, because I feel that it's just going to get harder and harder for for any level of a footballer or defender. So I've got, I think I've got away quite, quite late, to be brutally honest. Do you think this, the, it's going to get a lot shorter? So as in, like, your time at your peak is going to go to maybe you have eight years of yeah. high-level inter-county. Like, you might hang on and be a squad player for a few years, but as it gets better and better and better, it's going to be harder to be able to output, unless you adapt your game to play with the body that you have now. Because yeah. you won't be able to do the same things at 34 or whatever that you were able to do when you were 22. Right. 
and you'll find that you'll find that like at my the commitment level probably will maybe go to another level again like if you that's nearly semi-professional to professional as it is um other people might argue with me but like i don't i feel that what you put in like there's people getting paid thousands that wouldn't be putting in half the work um also like the demand of it because of the level that it's getting to regards to the demand on your body the, like the pace of the game what you're putting your body through more regarding to the game itself and what you're marking or playing against you know so like whenever them boy, like them other boys retired by throwing like Stephen Neal might have been 35 Sean Keanu 35 unless you're as you say unless you adapt your game to like Andy Moore Stevie and Neil and boys did do that like they used to go in a foot race straight out and won their own ball whereas they might have made five or six dummy runs in in the end of their careers to lose the man before they went you know they showed four or five times either side Mickey Dizzy before they go because that's a good factor make a man dizzy and then he does know his left is right like so you'll, you'll Where's see Where Gum is I see you two gum shields there, you know, so <laughs> what's wrong with that, man? But, like, I 100% agree, you do feel that it's got to that level and it will get to that level. At thir- if you get to 30, 31, um, obviously you will have, like, a, the 5% that are hanging on to 34, 35 because they're still at that level and able to play at that level, but I think it'll get to the stage where it's nearly you get the 30 you've had a good innings right okay super chat we'll move on to quick fire questions to finish so you can get off to the match first yeah. one is proudest achievement to date um like one in all Ireland last year and my mum and dad and girlfriend and brother and everybody been at it was actually the first match my dad has ever went to watch me play in so like his first time at like in Croke Park since 86 and first time seeing me play so that was special eh? and he'll never go to another one again now <laughs> very unlikely very yeah unlikely. well look he might be maybe he's right like he saw you win in all Ireland do you know you're not, it's not going to be you're not going to outdo it Barney you do it again like but um, like in 2018 when we got to the final he wouldn't go um, and he's never been done a high iron game like he's, he's not like he, he watches it and Pays a bit more attention to it now, like, but like he, he wasn't comfortable. But my brother Connor took him along, and like Connor has pictures and stuff, man. It's pure gold, like, you know, having the whole day, I went and stopped for tea and went for a pint after and stuff. It was class, like, you know. That's the job. Favorite athlete of all time? Uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson. <laughs> nice, that's the first time he's been mentioned. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, for his bodybuilding more so than his American football, I'd say. Or his acting, maybe. Uh, uh, his, uh, his wrestling. <laughs> his wrestling, yeah, yeah, exactly. Top tips. Rock bottom. The rock bottom, man. Eh? What's the biggest thing you've learned in the last 12 months? Um, like when things don't go as smoothly as you'd want to, how do you react from it? Like, so you were coming off a massive high. As I said, like I said earlier, your, your club is always there to pull you out of the hole when you're in a hole after having a a shit season to an extent. Last year was the first time that you were coming off like cloud nine to go back to your club. So it was completely different. You had to, you know, you had to sort of bust your own bubble to an extent to bring you, I don't know if I'd done it well enough, to be honest. I would do it better again, you know. Definitely would do it better the second time around, but like, it was, it's a strange one that you had, you were coming off the back of being all Ireland champions and then having to sort of get back into the grind again, you know, whereas you could have went on holiday for six months as handy, like, you know, so that I probably learned that the, on the other side of the scale is how, how to maybe conduct yourself and how to get yourself into the swing of things a wee bit quicker. Well, you're in luck. The next question is, what would you tell your 18-year-old self? Uh, probably a bit of advice on that if I knew how to go about it like but I wouldn't have known how to go about it then until you realised um, but probably to, to be great how to enjoy it all because like, man I came in when I was 20 and 
the one year rolls into three or four very quickly whenever you're not being successful. And all of a sudden, you're 31 on Sunday. So, you know. Happy that's, birthday. Yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where it's at now. And um, I have been, to be fair, I've been very lucky, like very lucky to be part of it for the length of time that I have been. But um, probably just to enjoy it and to not get bogged down as much as it did over, over certain years, you know. So just to let the brakes off, let the handbrake off, maybe. Absolutely. Well, look, enjoy the two matches this weekend. Hopefully it's two victories. And enjoy the birthday on Sunday. Hopefully it's two victories for a birthday present. And thanks again for coming on. It was great chat. No problem. No problem. Thank you, man.